Good morning, amazing first graders. It's been a whole week since I've seen you. It's Friday and I haven't seen you since last Friday, seven whole days, in person anyway. I've seen some of you in pictures. Thank you for sending me pictures. I love seeing your faces. Uh, first of all, I wanted to share with you that Rashid and I started our weather log yesterday. And this is not something you have to do, but I sent these yesterday, and if you've started, maybe yours looks a little like this. Here's my weather log, and as you can see, yesterday and today, I saw rain, clouds, and sun all in the same day. Both days, yesterday and today. Now, tomorrow could get kind of interesting. I heard there might even be some thunderstorms tomorrow. <laughs> Cumulonimbus, anyone, anyone? I know that's Jacob's favorite kind, and Jacob, that's mine too. I hope your dad told you. Anyway, this log's kind of cool because it also tracks the temperature each day. Yesterday it was about 55, today it was about 70 when I did my log. So I also drew a line between the two temperatures, and after the whole two weeks, I'm going to be able to see pretty clearly what was going on, how it was going up and down. So that's a cool thing about the weather logs. This one's called the Weather Watcher Log. So have fun with that. And uh, I also wanted to tell you how amazed I was at your number machines. So awesome, guys. Aren't they fun? Now you can do them whenever you want. Today, we're going to do uh, number bonds, number bond cuties, right? Um, and I thought I'd give us a quick refresher on that because the sheet I sent you today is just like the one yesterday for number machines, except it's number bonds. And again, we're getting pretty good with big numbers. So you can use any numbers you want in that bond. Try to, pr try to press yourself, give yourself a challenge to see if you can fit together numbers that are not just one or two apart from each other. Try to give yourself a challenge and really think about some cool bonds. So first thing, oh, I have this book here too. Guys, next week we're gonna get back into this. We're gonna start on chapter 13 next week. It's gonna be really fun. I can't wait. But today we're gonna do one last day of review and we're going to be reviewing number bonds. Here we go. Here's our number bond cutie. Remember him? <laughs> but we're gonna take off his face because we want numbers in here, don't we? We definitely want numbers. I made that in black, so let me switch to a different color now. One thing that's really important about number bonds is which, which circle is the whole and which circles are the parts. I know you guys know this. Can you point to the whole? That's right, this one here. And these are the parts. Now, no matter how I draw my bond, that's going to be the case. Remember that even if my bond looks like this, or even like this, an upside down one, no matter what, you always need to be able to find which one is the hole. Where's the hole here? Can you point to it? This one. The hole is the one that the legs come off of, okay? This one only has one leg coming off, so does this one. The hole is the one with both legs coming off of it. So I know you guys remember this, but I wanted to be sure. Back to our first bond right? Number bonds, you can start with either the parts or the whole. For this board, I'm going to start with the parts. What if I put in one part of 15 and one part of six? I need to find the whole, don't I? How am I going to find the whole? Remember, to find the whole, the parts add together. So I need to find out what is six more than 15 or 15 plus six. Do you guys know? 21. 15 plus five is 20. That's easy. 
so that I can add one more and know that 15 plus six is 21. Now I have my whole. There it is. Maybe my whole is the first thing I put in. Maybe my whole is 40. Now I have to think of two parts that make 40. Can I put 50 in one of the parts? No, I can't. Both parts have to be smaller than the whole. Both parts have to work together to make the whole. You have to be able to add the parts together to make the whole. So, what if I put, this one's hard. What if I put 28 in the part? <gasps> Now I need to count up to 40 to find the other part. Well, I know that I could add 10 and be at 38, right? So if I count up two more from 38, I get to 40. 10 and two is 12, so the other part must be 12. This was a hard one, but I know some of you love to challenge yourselves with number bonds. 28 and 12 make 40. How can I check myself? I bet some of you remember. If the parts can add together to make the whole, then I can take away one part from the whole to get the other part. So I could check myself by saying 12 less than 40 is 28. Is that true? Well, 10 less than 40 is 30. And if I go down two more, that's 28. I must be right. Let's do one last one, a little less hard this time. I'll keep them flipped up this way. This time I'm going to start with, let's see, 32 in my hole. This one will be a little easier. See if you can solve it. I need two numbers smaller than 32. Hmm. If I decide to make one of my parts 22, then what will my other part be? Well, I can find that out pretty easily by saying, count up from 22 to 32, or subtract 32 minus 22. I think it actually might be easiest for me to just think about going up from 22 to 32. I only have to go up how many? 10, right? You can use whatever numbers you like in your number bonds. I do want you to challenge yourself, okay? And have fun with it. There's just one sheet of that today. You have reading and you have your spelling quiz, which mom or dad or another older friend can give you. And that's pretty much it for the day. Besides, oh yeah, check your rain bags. So cool. In my um, email today, I sent you a picture of James's rain bag. He actually has a cloud in it. Maybe you got one too. Really, really neat. Before I go, I have a story to share for, with you today called Home in the Woods. I picked this story today because it's about the passing of seasons and all around me here, I see spring just exploding. I know you do too. We talked about birds yesterday. We've talked about the seasons. We're watching the weather. We're seeing it get warmer. This book is definitely about the seasons. This book is also about counting your blessings. Counting your blessings means being really thankful no matter what, even when things are hard. And that's a great message any day. So I hope you enjoy this. And then I hope you have a wonderful day. Home in the Woods by Eliza Wheeler. Kind of a map, huh? <clears throat> Home in the Woods by Eliza Wheeler. This is the family that the story's about, guys. So you've got a mom right here and then a bunch of kids. Ray, Rich, Marv, B, Lowell, Doll, and Marvel. 
and with Marvel it says if there's an arrow that says this is me I'm having trouble here dad lives with the angels now and we need to find a new home Summer. Deep in the woods, we find a shack all wrapped in tar paper. It's hot outside, but the shack looks cold and empty, like I feel inside. You never know what treasures we'll find, says Mom. Look at that place. Needs a lot of help. But Lowell and Ava find a door in the floor. Below is a root cellar filled with old glass jars, a tin pail, a pile of rags, and a pitcher pump that goes up and down, up and down, and out comes a stream of cool, clear water. Other than that, guys, there's not a whole lot here, is there? When the crystal rains fall, our seeds slowly take root. Some treasures take a little time, says mom. The songs of happy frogs echo through the trees. The woods are a tangle of birch, poplar, pine, and sugar maple. Marv finds the secret paths of withered deer, I'm sorry, of white-tailed deer woven all around. Withered deer made no sense. Did you see how I stopped and checked there? White tail makes a lot more sense. The paths lead us to a twisting trout creek, an empty beaver lodge, and a blooming berry patch with sweet jewels of blue and red. We fill our pail. Marv's hat, Ray's bag, Lowell fills his empty belly. Our laughter echoes through the trees. Autumn. Cool winds come and spice up the air and fill it with rust and ruby leaves. Mum walks into town to do chores for pay, so we take care of chores at the shack. Rich writes them on paper slips that we draw from a hat. Split wood, pull weeds, pick veggies, sweep some, hang clothes, and wash up. We fill the glass jars with mum's berry preserves and the harvest from our garden. We'll save them for winter and stack them in the cellar like buried treasure. When we need more supplies, we head to Bennett's general store. The windows are full of marvelous things. Catalog dresses, pearly sweets, Shiny tools, wind up toys, but mom's chore money can only buy some basics. Baking flour, soap flakes, lamp oil. We say nothing at all on the long walk home. Back at the shack, we invent a new game, General Store. We can buy anything we want. Rich is the banker, Marv pumps gas, B sells fine hats, Lowell is the jeweler, I display mud sweets. Our laughter echoes through the trees once again. Winter. The days are dark and bitter winds blow. Ray and Marv trek out to hunt for food. Bee huddles in the lamp's glow. Mum teaches her that scraps put together make colored patchwork. I huddle by the warm stove. Rich teaches me the letters that letters put together make words and words put together make stories. Most days, Ray and Marv return from their hunt with nothing at all, but, to, but tonight they are proud and tall. We plunder our stores and mom works the oven like magic. A feast for the kings and queens of the forest, Rich says. Soft loaf bread,
baked green beans, wild turkey stew, and blueberry pie. Snow falls in a blanket of diamonds all around the shack. The jack pines sway above as we fall asleep close together, but mom stays awake into the night, whispering to the stars. Spring! After many months, warm, fresh air comes pouring into the shack. The cottonwoods are all in bloom. Ma and Bee carry Mum's loaf bread and blueberry jam to the neighbor's farm. They fill our pail with milk and our hat with golden eggs. We go slow and careful on the path home. Bee calls out the flower's names, wood violet, dwarf iris, pink lady slipper, pitcher plant, the songs of happy birds echo through the trees. Here in these woods, I find my brothers, my sisters, our mom, and me, Marvel. The shack all wrapped in tar paper looks different now, warm and bright and filled up with love, like I feel inside. The end. This is actually, was a kind of a true story that the author wrote about her own family a long time ago. I just love that book. It's kind of different, it's not like funny or anything, but it really made me think. They didn't have a lot, but they loved each other and they still found blessings everywhere they looked, which is so amazing. I hope you're able to do that today. And I hope that you have some fun with number bonds. And uh, I think that's all. I hope you have a wonderful weekend too. I won't see you till next week, but I'm always here if you wanna send me anything or let me know what you're doing. Bye guys.